Okay, so with the thought in mind that this is uh, no plans, throw yourself into it, one power tool other than a drill project, I need to figure out what angle I'm going to make the roof so that it joins together and it comes down at the right angle. So Mark in the shed hadn't yet realised that the jigsaw that he has in front of him, the Makita, only does a 45. So the right angle turned out to be 45 degrees on each. So when they join together the two sides of the roof, then it makes a 90 degree angle between them. So I quickly popped outside as you can see and I put a straight edge along the plank and set the jigsaw to a 45 and went along the cut. Now this is a slow process, take your time because it will try and push away from the guide quite a lot. Once that was done I just marked up the two cuts I would need to make each of the sides of the roof and quickly whipped them off using a speed square and the jigsaw back at 90 degrees now so that I could have all my roof, roof pieces together. Anybody new to using a speed square, this is the same technique I use with my circular saw. I just clamp it very hard against the wood and then run the jigsaw along the edge and that gives you the 90 degree cut that you need. Now you know they say measure twice, cut once. Well, when I brought the pieces back up I realised that, yeah check it with the tape measure, you can see they're nowhere near the same length. So. It's a good project to have limited wood for because I've already wasted my first piece. Anyway, I cut a new piece so that we didn't have to worry about having a lopsided roof. And then we were back in business. Okay. After a few minor mishaps, we've got the pieces we need for our roof. So, my intention is to have these at a 90 or making a 90 degree and then these second pieces extending the roof down so and I'm gonna leave it at that it doesn't have to be waterproof it's not like the birds are living in this they're just popping in to have some food and these are going to be held together as well by a piece of wood at a right angle that's going to sit in the middle here that I'm going to cut and then it's going to join down to the base that's my plan and if it doesn't work we'll do something else but I'm going to go back outside because I want this to be a project that is mainly built outside so that people with limited space don't need to worry we can all do this this is a one tool build not having any plans uh, led me to a couple of decisions I made on the fly this is one of them I actually was going to make the roof out of two pieces the one with the 45 degree angle and then one attached to it both the same width now as I looked at it that was going to be huge so I just cut one down the length and that would make two pieces that I could add on that would make the roof just a little bit shorter. So now happy with the width of the roof, I needed to make the two side pieces that would join the roof down onto the base. Um, I'm just using the 90 degrees of the speed square here, setting it in the center of the wood um, so that I can just lop off the two corners and then have my two side pieces. Again, the jigsaw here, you could use um, a guide if you need to, but I just did this bit by freehand. Um, takes a little bit of practice, I guess, but if you take your time and don't go right up to the line, then you'll limit the amount of mistakes you can make. Once I had both pieces cut, I just gave it a quick check to make sure that it was in fact a true 90 degree angle, popped the two pieces together and just held the roof against it just to make sure that I was happy with the dimensions as they were coming along uh, because once we've fi fixed it together it becomes a bit more difficult to change. Then I trimmed off the excess that was on one of the pieces to make them identical and then I started marking a little bit of a decorative groove that I wanted to cut out from the side panels. Now with this just freehand it and um, once you cut the first piece out hold it against the other side so that you can do a bit of a mirror image to make sure they're symmetrical. Once you've cut the first piece out you can then hold that over the second, draw, trace around it and before you know it you've got two identical pieces again. I confess here I had no intention of doing anything else to these side pieces but then looking at them I thought don't most birdhouses have a little hole in them for something? So I clamped it down nice and secure, I got my fours in a bit 
Uh, you can use a drill bit here if you've got one big enough, or you could even cut a circle with the jigsaw if you're careful enough. Um, I had a bit of trouble because there's a knot in the wood, but once we got the hole through the one and then through the second one using a piece behind it to stop any tear out, then I felt quite lucky because I could get my moxon vise out so that I could clamp the pieces nice and tight and just square up the bottom edges to make sure they are exactly the same depth. Just used a hand plane for this. You'll notice the moxon vise wobbling about a bit. That's purely because my sawhorse was on an uneven ground and I just got lazy and didn't want to move it. If you haven't seen the Moxon Vice build yet, click on the tab in the top corner. It's a really good one and this shows the versatility. You can use it inside, outside. I'm just trimming up all the pieces that are going to join for the roof now just to make sure that they've got nice neat edges and that there's going to be less of a gap between them. It's so practical. A little bit of sanding later and all the pieces were pretty much ready to start construction until I thought one more thing was needed so I just got the edges of the roof and I thought I'm going to put a bit of a decorative feature on here to make it look a little bit more birdhousey. Um, well I've got the jigsaw out and the, and the clamps out so I just quickly clamped it to the vise and just cut out a couple of half circles to make it look like a real roof or a real bird's house roof anyway. With this being a no plans build you can do what you like with this really, um, add as many holes as you want within the structural confines of it. Add a little door, put a little peg on it for them to, for the birds to stand on, put the feed on, follow your heart. Now I didn't film it but I actually cut a few little battens like you can see me using here to hold the two pieces of the roof together. I didn't want to glue it because I thought that was a little bit too much so I'm just going to put a couple of screws in each end and then that's going to hold the roof together and we can then put the side onto it as I'm showing you there. So that's just Now before we start constructing this, I've got a bit of a confession to make. Every single one of the screws that I picked up last time I went to one of the big stores is an interior screw. These will not last outside, so please, before you pop in the comments, you know, you've, got, you've put the wrong screws in, etc. I, I know it's going to cause me problems down the line, but I wanted to get this build done as quick as possible so I could see how much the time frame uh, is needed for it, so I could say this is a build that takes so long. So, I'm going to put this together using the countersink bit with crosshead screws. And then once we've got that, we can measure for the base and we are nearly there. Don't forget, if you don't have a workbench like this, you could set up just a piece of wood on top of your two sawhorses or you could work on an outside bench, kitchen table, anything. Here I'm just marking up the side pieces so I know where to put the battens because the battens are going to hold not only the roof together but they're going to screw through into the side pieces so I can hide all my screws inside the structure and then they're going to butt against each other like that, the battens. You can put a 45 on them if you want, I just did them butting against each other but you have to make sure you leave enough room quick countersunk bit to screw some holes and then we can start screwing into the sides. I made a bit of a mistake here, I will confess. I should have I should have countersunk some screws for where they're going to go into the sides. Didn't hold me back too much but it's just something if you're doing it, it might be a bit of a handy hint. Slightly off screen here but then I just screw them into the roof just to make sure I keep the roof pieces together and haha <laughs> don't do that where they fall off. Anyway, second try, screw them nice and tight and that'll hold the roof together and it will give it a nice look, I think, of a proper bird's house roof. I decided not to screw the roof pieces together to themselves through the 45, again to hide the screws. So I've just tested fitted the side piece where the 90 degree top is and it went really well so long as it doesn't overlap the actual join and then I clamped it together so I could screw the screws through to hold it in place. Once you've got every piece held together, the, st the stability of it, the strength of it really comes into its own. Here you see me wishing that I'd countersunk some holes here because it's a real pain at that angle. Anyway, we got all the screws in and it holds the side on nicely. You really then just repeat the process over and over so that you get both sides of the roof on the one side and then you can pop in the other side piece into the nice right angled corner that you've made on the other end. Clamping it really helps because it just stops the screw pushing the side away. What I would say is looking at me here, clamp it to the table as well because it makes your life so much easier. Anyway, there's one side, looks pretty good. So we just need to put the other side in. What could possibly go wrong? Well, here's your answer. What could possibly go wrong? Once I got this side in place, the drill doesn't fit. So we just need to quick get a quick gadget out the drawer, one of these right angle pieces so that we can get that into the screw. And 
luckily we can carry on with the build if you haven't got one of these you can also get a snake type thing that helps you get in there as well I'll try and find one and put a link in the description anyway anyway this helps to drill the screws in but it is really tricky and it took a long time I've sped it up you don't need to see me trying to get this all done uh, but once all the screws are in then that's the sides and the roof put together and we're nearly there we've got the top of our birdhouse and you know what it sits really flush so we've by copying all the different measurements down that's come out really well I will say the top has not met perfectly but I'm not too worried I think what we can do either take a plane across the top and just put a piece of wood flush on the top that will then act as the the top of the roof and stop any moisture getting down there and it, to be honest it's mainly aesthetics I'm not worried about moisture getting in but what we're going to do is see how much wood we've got left after we've done the base so obviously this now needs a base to sit on and then it's done so let's measure that up and get cracking one thing I love about no plan builds is that you don't have to stick to measurements or to remember how long to cut things I just held this over the two pieces to make sure I got the lengths for the base trimmed them off and there you go two base pieces I still have my Mox and Vice set up so I thought well give them a quick plane so they sit nicely together I plane the other edges as well so that they're nice and neat too give them a quick sand and then I cut some battens to attach the roof and sides to the base I just use my miter saw to get them started and then just a Japanese pull saw to go through and then I tidied them up again with the plane and if by this stage you haven't seen how versatile the Moxon Vice is and aren't interested in making your own I'm very surprised it's brilliant if you want to do any work outside this is far better than clamping stuff to your saw horses directly okay so now we just attach those inside the the roof and they'll not only hold the base together but they will hold the top to the base so I've got four going down into the base two on either side to hold them together and three going through into this I'm also going to drill th through this into the into the side so I've also got to make sure that uh, actually there's plenty of space for that that's fine and uh, then it's just a case of whatever else we want to do to it really You do lose a bit of sight of what I'm doing here now, but basically I'm just using the top. Once the first piece is fixed, use the top to tell me where the second piece is going to go, the batten, and then I just screw it down. And then using that right angled um, bit that goes in the drill, I had to then put the screws in through into the side. It's really easy, but it is a bit finickety. You can't really see it here, so I've just sped through it so because you know exactly what I'm doing at this stage. I didn't spend a huge amount of time tidying this up around the edges but I did take a block plane just to lightly champ for some of the edges that maybe the kids will touch if they reach up to put some food on the table or something like that and just to level off the boards a bit where there was a few mil discrepancy then I just drilled through I've used some really long screws here I don't know why I don't think it's actually that integral to the structure but I thought better safe than sorry and you can't see them anyway so I just put four into each two on the sides of each of the bottom pieces and this gives expansion room as I say later to the outsides hopefully but if there's a gap just helps with drainage we're not really too precious about what it looks like at this stage now I had two leftover bits from where we cut the 45s and I thought Actually, these might be handy to stop the bowls getting pushed off by some of the bigger birds like pigeons and stuff that might come on. So I just gave them a little tidy up and just nailed them straight to the base here. Didn't bother gluing or anything and I think they look quite nice as well. Well folks, that's it. We did it. With three hours, one plank of wood, just a jigsaw and a drill, we've made our bird table. And you know what? 
three hours isn't bad for that. It is a super hot day. I'm not gonna spend too much time doing anything else with this. I might give it a quick sand. And then I'm gonna put it up on its tree stump so that the birds can start enjoying their food. One thing that I will point out is, as before, these were internal screws. Pop some external screws in yours. It'll last longer. Also, those of you worried about wood movement, this has been outside for a long, old time, and I tried to keep the screws in positions where the wood could expand and contract, so all of the ones on these two boards are in the centre. Hopefully the contract contraction will happen on the outsides, so it shouldn't crack too much in the middle. The roof, the same thing. Hopefully it will go downwards. I think that, to be honest, if it opens up a couple of gaps, it's no worse than the one that goes straight across the top. But I'm happy. I'm Mark. Thank you so much. We started making with this one, and now we're done. A nice morning's work and the kids are going to love it. If you've enjoyed the video, like, comment and please subscribe. We're growing and we're growing really well. Thank you to all of you for that. I want to keep going with these builds and I can do if you guys join me.